Hi everybody, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio and today I thought that we would open my new box of pan pastels, which I have never tried before, and use them out and try them out on this, uh, I think it's a leopard I drew, a leopard with blue eyes, um, and see if we like them. I want to use the pan pastels on a bigger piece that I'm going to work on um, to save on my pastel pencils, but since I've never used them before, I want to try them out on this smaller piece first and see how I like them. So let's open these things. I got the Pan Pastels Artist Pastel Color Set Painting Pure Colors. So supposedly you're supposed to be able to mix these to make most of the colors you need. Hang on, my dog's making noise. Okay, so we're back. So you're supposed to be able to mix these to make most of the colors you need. So hopefully you can read which colors are in here. This is a 20 set, I believe. So let's see, how should we open these? I think this slides out. Does it slide out? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I don't want to rip it. It's so pretty. I think I might have to. Here, let's see if we can do it without ripping it. Okay. All right. And then... Oh boy. I'm clearly going to have to cut some of this out. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Ready? Here we go. Ooh. Ooh, what have we got here? Okay, so this is a softy, or soft, I guess they're pronounced, tool. I might have to get more of those, we'll see. And here's a little brochure. Wow, that's a big brochure. <laughs> oh, they have metallics and pearls. Ooh, do you see that? I didn't know that. Oh, I might have to get those. Someday, if I like these, I'd like to get the whole set. But we'll see. First, let's see if we even like it. I've got a bad art supply addiction. So, so here are these, but there's no little, are they in here? Uh-oh. Oh, there they are. They're in the bottom of here. These little towers are pretty cool, huh? Oh look, there's a whole bunch more in that one. Let's see if there's anything in the bottom of the other ones. Oh, more stuff. What about this one? Oh, <laughs> look at all of them. So I probably don't need any more tools, huh? At least not to start. This is gonna be so much fun. Okay, let's take these out. So we've got a stack. It looks like there's six colors per stack. Okay. All right, let's move this box for now. All right, so let's see here. Let's see what we've got going on here. Okay, so here's my little drawing that I did. We're gonna do the base layer and the pan pastels and then move on to pastel pencils. I have the full set now, both of the Stabilo Carbothellos and also the Faber-Castell pits. Although I've only used a handful of the pits so far and I haven't even opened my big box set yet. So we'll probably open that and try that on here too. Um, and in case I didn't say, this is the Clairefontaine pastel mat, which is the only kind of paper I like to use. So, um, and then... If you want to follow along, I can, I think this reference photo is either from Unsplash or Pexels. I'll put the link down below to the photo in case you want to try doing this little tutorial too. So let's get started. Okay, so I looked and this photo is actually by, is on Unsplash. So I will put the link for that down below and let's get started. Okay. I've never used these before, so we'll have to just check out the colors, I guess, to start. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's black. 
And we're going to need the black, so let's take that one out. Um, and this must be the gray. This is neutral gray. And there's the white. Let's see. I'm not, I'm decide, trying to decide which colors I'm going to try to use to mix. So, again, bear with me. This is the first time I've... That might be a good color. First time I've ever used these, so... Oh, let's see. So we've got... I don't know that I want the red. What's below the red? Mm. No, I don't think we want that one. Mm, or that one. I wonder if there's a yellow. Ooh, that's pretty. That's a pretty color. So is that one. These are going to be fun. I hope I like them. Ooh. I might have to speed these up. <laughs> I don't know if everybody likes to look at all the colors like I do or not. I don't know. Maybe I'll speed it up. Oh, we probably all need that blue, huh? And maybe the green. Let's take those two out. Green, blue, light blue. Ooh, look at that green. I don't know if I want that one or not. We'll see. I guess we could just... So I went through that stack. I'm probably not going to need that bright orange. Maybe. Probably not. I'm going to take this yellow out. Not this such a bright one, though. Nope. And the first thing we need to do after we get our colors picked is figure out how to mix. So from what I've been told, you can mix these on printer paper, which is why I started out with this. Alright, well, let's try mixing some colors and see what happens here. Alright, so let's start by mixing some of this lighter color here. Now, I'm going to go over this with the pencil for the detail, so we want it darker than actually what it appears. So let's take a little of this white, put it on the paper. It's kind of like playing with makeup. And maybe a dab of this and mix that in. A little bit more. I think that might look like a good base color. All right, where are those little tiny dealios? Here they are. All right, let's try this and see how it goes. All right, so we've got our little spots of mixed color. And... Now I know it looks dark on here. But remember, the lighter colored details have to show up. So we're just going to fill this in. Well, I didn't mix enough, I guess. Fill this in. Let's mix up some more. All right, so... Ooh, I got my white all dirty. How do you keep your colors from not getting dirty? Obviously, if I had unlimited money in the world, I would buy this into these. These are already really fun, I can tell. <laughs> All right, let's add a little more white. I wonder if I could just brush it in there like that. All right, let's try putting that in. I made it a little lighter, but that's okay. Actually, the spot's a little lighter on the picture anyway, so. Now, I'm one thing I was worried about with these, and this is why I wanted to test it before I started a bigger project, 
was I was worried I would put on too much and then not be able to put the colored pencil, or not the colored pencil, sorry, the pastel pencil on top. So I'm sort of, I'm looking at this paper and trying to figure out how much I can put on and still have lots of room for layers of um, the pastel pencil on top. I see the UPS truck coming. <laughs> I don't know if there's a package coming or not. If there are, there is, I might have to pause this because my dog's going to go crazy. No matter how many times I tell her the UPS man is not a threat, she still feels the need to bark. <laughs> I don't think he's coming down. We're okay. These are fun, very fun. How far up am I gonna go with this? Farther than that, I guess. I bet these tools get eaten down by this paper pretty fast so I can feel the gripping on it. All right, now, just out of curiosity, that's the lightest part there. I wonder what this, what color this would be if I, this might be good for the medium tones on here. Let's do the, just right from the pan. Try that out. I can tell I didn't need to be afraid. I was afraid to go directly onto my big... I don't know, do you call it pastel paintings or pastel drawings? It feels more like painting to me. I, I would like to call it painting, but I don't know. Avoid these areas right here. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about is, so I know a lot of people will tell you you can't use um, white graphite paper, or just regular graphite paper with pastels because you're, uh, pastels won't coat over the top because it's sticky. This is white graphite right here. And as you can see, my pastels are having no trouble at all covering up the edges, which I don't even actually want right now. I'm trying to go around them. Um, I don't, I know that you're supposed to get like an art projector and use it to put your sketch on the paper that way and Blah, blah, blah. But A, I don't have money for an art projector. And B, I really, I don't have any trouble with the pastels, even with like the pencils or the Prismacolor um, new pastels, which is what I used before this. I've never had trouble with it going over. So, I mean, I guess it's a personal choice. Um, I'm going to put a little of this right here, too. This looks a little... See, now this might be when you start to get too many layers. I don't know. When you're using your... Doing a second color on top. Boy, yeah. This pastel um, mat is just eating these little softy brushes. I'm clearly going to need some more of those. All right, where are we at now? Let's go down here. I'm trying to get a little work in on this, but both of my pets need my attention. I can hear little Farita over there rummaging around, and my dog wants a walk, so we'll see how far we get before um, before we have to take the dog for a walk and take the ferret out. Okay, what am I doing here? This is going to be... It's really light right there. I wonder if I should have gone a little darker up in here. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out, won't we? I probably could have done all of the light areas with this. Although, this right here and right here and right here are really the lightest. So, maybe it's better that I went with the darker. Um... 
All right, this also is much faster, I think, than the pencils. I definitely like these. Oh, that was a dark spot. <laughs> oh well. Here, before I forget, let's uh come in here and go right over it with a little. Ooh, that's dark. I'll have to mix for the darker spots. That's too dark. Ooh, now I got this side all dirty. I should have saved it for light. Oh, I guess we'll just have to. You can see already how. I think you can see. Maybe it won't focus. There it goes. See how it's all peeling off already? Okay, so we've got some of this medium color here. And I'm just trying to mostly fill in a base layer just so I don't have my pastel pencils eaten up quite so much. These are actually, they're a more expensive outlay when you get started, but actually in the long run, it's much cheaper to use these than to keep restocking your pastel pencils. See, so even up here, I had some real full-on graphite where I marked the corners of where I wanted to tape, and that's covering it up. I mean, maybe you can see that a little bit. The white graphite paper seems to have no trouble, though. All right, so we're gonna come up, maybe that should have a little bit lighter there. Come up like this. And let's see. Oh, I think it goes like there's a big round spot right there, maybe. Like that. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. What have we got over here? I think this goes like this. Excuse my dry hands, as I've mentioned before, I have part of my autoimmune issues is that I have a uh, Raynaud's disease, and in the winter my hands don't have normal circulation, so they get very, very, very dry because they don't have enough blood th flow going through them to keep them nice. So just ignore them. They'll look much better in the summer. <laughs> All right. All right, I think we're getting here with this color now. Let's see, so we've got a dark patch here. Come down through here, uh-oh. Don't drag your sleeve through it like I just did. Okay, so we've got that there. All right, you know what I didn't see was a nice brown. Was there a dark, there isn't a real dark brown. Okay, so clearly I need like a raw umber type color. That's what I'm gonna have to buy. Okay, let's take, what do we wanna do now? Let's do this spot right here. Let's take a little black. And actually it will mix up quite a bit of this cause this will be for all the dark spots, I think. This is way too dark. Here, I'm just trying to clean this off a little bit before I get some of the white. Mm -mm. And then let's add a touch of this same brown color. So you, you can mix them. I'm not having trouble mixing them. I do feel like I'm maybe wasting a little bit. Let's try, uh, let's try, yeah. I do feel like I'm wasting a little bit, so my little frugal heart says, hey, I wish you had the actual colors so you don't have to mix and waste a little bit. All right, let's go back to this one for this now. 
Okay, I actually feel like that's maybe not dark enough. Let's add some more of this dark. All right, uh, let's see here. I don't know if I how much of this I wanna. That's a, a pretty good raw umber color there. See, you can see bits of my sponge coming off here now. So clearly that's something I'm gonna probably have to order like right away is some more sponges. These little ones that look like eyeshadow applicators, <laughs> whatever you call them. I don't know about you, but one of the things I really like to do when I'm feeling unmotivated or blocked or just stale or stagnant is to try a new art supply. Do something I haven't done before. And you know, that can get kind of expensive, so sometimes you have to maybe just try a new technique with an art supply you already have. But if you're really, really blocked and you have the money, getting a new art supply can be very invigorating. <laughs> That's a funny word to use, okay. I lost my train of thought because I was Maybe in some of these places I'll cut out my voice and put some nice pretty music or something so it's more relaxing. Mm -mm -mm. It's pretty dark up in here. Hopefully I can get a couple layers of dark over it. And my dog is getting more and more impatient, so I think I might have to stop before I go into the blue eye here and take her for a snowshoe. She says, take me out, please. See what have we got going on here? And just about Ooh, that was dark. Well, luckily that's a pretty dark spot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that's a good spot to stop. Let's see. Except I don't like how this one looks. That one, and this one's really, really dark here too. Even at this stage, I'm trying to go in the direction of the fur growth. I don't know if you see that. But I've got my reference photo propped up just over here. And I'm trying to move this in the way that the fur grows. Because I found that... Even in these early stages, it can be really mess up the fur direction later on. This is pretty dark right here. We're getting into some of these areas here where this would be better to be done with a pencil. The eye is so pretty and blue on this. I don't know if somebody photoshopped it or if they actually have eyes that color. That would be interesting to know. Okay. I think that's a good spot to stop for now. And I am just going to leave everything here and I will reset up later. Okay. I'm back from taking care of my dog. And we're going to keep working here a little bit. I think we're almost done with the 
hand pastels, but I think I would like to do... Actually, before I do that, I see a highlight here that I didn't mark that I would like to mark. So we'll just do... Oh, let's see. There's another one up in here, like that. Okay. All right, so I think I've got them all marked in now. Okay. All right, this is dirty. I don't know if you can get these clean again. At least not clean enough to switch to another color. All right, let's, uh, let's do a little blue. A little blue, woo! A little blue that's gonna be pretty bright. Let's add in a little of the white. That's better. I think I wanna add just a dab of this. Tone it down a little bit. All right, let's add this in here. Ooh, that's still pretty bright. Oh well. I like a bright eye. We can always tone it down as we go over it later, too. Mm -mm -mm. How dirty is this one? Pretty dirty. That'll probably tone... Oh, that's too dark, though. That's no good. There, that's better. All right. Actually, that color might be good for up in here now. Where's that little one? There's a little of that over in here. And right around here. And it's going to end up being pretty dark up here. We'll put in a little of this. Okay. All right. All righty. You can see already I've missed a, this was supposed to be like to here. Okay, I think it's time to put the pan pastels away and switch to my pastel pencils. Okay, so today I'm going to use my Stabilo Carbothello. I thought about opening my new fabric pastel pits, but I didn't feel like it. So, <laughs> although I might use a handful of them that I already have because I know some of the blue colors are not light fast. So, all right, let's see here. What have we got here for blues? That's not a good one. All right, so let's see what we've got for this color here. All right, I'm gonna start in the eye here. This is uh, 435 and it's got a 3 for the light fast rating and this is 430. I don't use it below a 3 generally. Um, 
because I would like my stuff to last for a long time, if possible. use I think the 110 that's pretty light we might come back and do one little spot of white right in the middle there we'll see That's the 110. All right, now we're gonna use the 780. This is a five for the light fastness. That's a really good one. This is probably not gonna be dark enough for up here, but I don't, well, we can always darken it up later. I don't wanna go too overboard right at the very beginning. this with that light blue here I think I'm really happy so far with how the pan pastels feel underneath this I was worried it would feel like I had a bunch of layers already but it doesn't it feels good so far Come right on top of that with this blue here. And I know that looks really light, but don't worry, we're gonna smudge this. a little of this over here too just really lightly okay now we're gonna take the 760 which I think is like a dark navy blue I never write the colors on here so it's hard to say we're gonna start in with that over in here yeah it is a pretty bluish color And we'll probably come back over this with some black. But you never want to use just black just by itself. It gets too uh, flat. It's too flat. You need to have some other color on top, on, underneath it or on top of it to make it not so flat. So right here I did have a little bit of trouble getting the pastel to stick over the white graphite paper. But not a whole lot. I'm not terribly unhappy with it. I should put a piece of paper under my hand. Let's get a fresh piece of paper.
So one of the reasons I wanted the Faber Castile Castile Pit pencils is because specifically most of the blues in the Carbothello are not light fast. So if that doesn't bother you, then don't worry about it, but it does bother me. If I'm going to put a lot of effort into something, I want to make sure that it's going to last for a while. Alright, let's do this pupil here. Okay, all right, now we need like a yellowy greeny color for right around the pupil. Let's see what this is, if this is good. Nope, that one's not light fast. Hmm, so I might have to layer it then, there. Let's see, this is the 685. And just glaze it really lightly over here. Let's see, it comes up in here a little bit. And then it's right around the pupil a little bit. Okay, this is 590. Let's do a little of that on top. to go get the unless I can do it really lightly ever so lightly I might have to go get my the Faber Castile blue that I already have because I need a darker blue okay this is the Faber Castile that I already have. This is the 151 and it's a three. Um, and this was part of the reason why I wanted to get the Faber Castile set. Because there isn't a blue this dark that's light fast in the Cabilo, the Stabilo Carbothello ones. Okay, let's try blending this and see how it turns out. You can blend with your finger or a cotton tip for this small area and getting around these highlights. I'm going to be using the cotton bud or tip or whatever you want to call it. It's such a small area and I don't want to risk smudging the highlights. Okay, let's do along here. Over 
here. And now let's see if we can very carefully get into here without smudging those highlights. This is going to have to be darkened up quite a bit. I think we might come in with the black next and do that. First I want to do a little of this blue along here. When you first get a box of the Carbothello's or the Faber-Castile, especially if you get the box of 60, you're like, oh, it's, it's so much, it's so, there's so many colors, but really you end up having to do an awful lot of blending. To get the right colors. The colors are often really vibrant and not muted and um, that can be a problem. Okay let's see here's my Carbothello black and I think it's time to go in with it now. Let's darken up some of these areas. It does look like it comes in here a little bit. Maybe I'll put in some nice relaxing music here in those times when I am thinking and go silent. That would be nice. One of the things I like about drawing is how relaxing it is. My brain just goes silent. It's actually a very, very important part of my health care is doing art and, and drawing and painting. I'm a, a worrier, and if you're a worrier, you know what I mean. Sometimes it just seems like your head never shuts off. And now we're going to come in with the 545. This is a three. I'm going to do just a little bit of that over here.
And let's see, up in here, we're gonna go back. I swear I had a better color than this. Let's see what I can find. Is that this one? Yeah, 585, but that needs to be sharpened. Let's do that, let's see how that is. Yeah, that's better. feel like I had a color that was better than that. Guess I don't. All right. So let's do a little more of this blue. That's too bright. That would be good for down here. I love that really bright right here. That was the 430. And then this one over in here again. This is the 455. glazing with the 685 over here. This is 770, yeah. This is almost black. Let's take the the pit pastel again, the 151. There's a little bit of a Oops, all right. just gonna smudge this a little bit not as much because we're starting to want some of these details to stay and then I also have the fabric Castile in white which is 101 because the white is a little brighter and harder than the the Cabilo, the Stabilo Carbothellos. Probably by the time we finish the rest of the fur, we'll have to come back and touch up these highlights again, but 
for now. This is, I like to put them in, so. And if you don't wanna smudge something out fully, but it's a, just a little too bright, then what you do is you take your finger and you just tap it, just ever so slightly. And I think I'm gonna stop there for right now because the ferret has to go out. <laughs> I think it's time to start working on the fur. I think. Alright, we're starting with 704. And we're gonna start with the fur up in this corner here. a little lighter than I wanted. Mm. We are gonna use that one, but we're not gonna start with it, I think. What about this one, 625? All right, let's start with this. Let's try this. I think it's going to end up being a mix between this, which is 625, and this, which is 704. This is 706. Let's try this. Yeah, that's better. All right. Okay, so that was the 705. Um, I'm just gonna put a few of these darker ones in here, especially right here. The real dark brown, which is, I think, this one. Yeah, that's good. This is 635. What I should do is go through all my pencils and arrange them so that they're the light, fast ones, or all on one layer, and the non light, fast ones are on another.
come back to the black, 750, not back, this is I guess the first time we've been using the black. Right, and then we'll add in some of the 708 to the black. We don't want to really rub this together with a cotton bud. We're just tapping it together to blend it a little bit. Now I'm going to take the 704 
And let's go back to the black. What we're doing now is just making sure all the hairs aren't going in the exact same direction because that looks fake. have to keep doing layers and overlapping and then back again with the 704 until it starts to look blended together and not so rough and not real looking. Tap it back as needed. So this was our 704. I think I'm going to take this one now and we're going to do
Okay, we're going back to the 704. That's too late. Let's go back to... Where is this one darker? Oops, that one not look good. Brown, then maybe. There is a little more brown right there. Alright, we're back to the 704. Now these hairs here are longer and more sweeping. So our strokes have to be longer and more sweeping too. Follow the direction of the hair. right here are shorter again. dark brown again. This is the 635. I kind of like that brown under the black better. I feel like I gave it more depth. So that's what we're going to do right here. with the black. Again, with this one, and just keep blending them together so they look real. Tap, 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 tap. Is this the same one we're using down here? Yes, it is. 
Oh, this is the 704. This is the black again. I, think I forgot to say that. brown in here. This is the 625. Alright, we're gonna take this 110 and put in some of these highlight areas over here. Thank you. 
going in with some of this bluish gray color. This is the 770. Remember what I said about not using just plain black. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have enough depth. So I'm now sort of just blending in the strokes a little bit too with this. Glazing a little color over it, it helps blend everything together. See that color up in here. Okay, let's do a base layer of this up in here. Better. I kind of wish I had done that underneath all the other blacks, but oh well. Oh well. This is going to be the 704. was that? I don't even remember now. I think it was the 770. And then, no, 770 is, yeah, 750 is the black I got.
770, right? No. This one's the 770. Need to be sharpened soon. Twenty-five. There's quite a bit of that in right up in here. And
that one over in here. We're gonna switch to the 110. Oh, smudging everything else, try to put in a few little Let's see, there's some down here. a few right here. This is one of the lightest areas on the whole drawing. Uh, I think I said it, but if I didn't, <laughs> didn't, this is the 110. longer okay let's get that 770 This was a pretty good beginner's tutorial. I only used a handful of colors. This should make it easy to try out pastels and see if you like them without having to do a very large outlay to buy a bunch of stuff. Now the hairs here are getting really short. Also, I think I want to come back in here and I need like a pale cream. Let's see. This is 105. Let's try that. Ooh, that's good. This is the 105. To add a little hint of yellow to this. Well, yeah. I'm gonna probably want to go back through and put this in other places too. Sure, you always go with the direction of the hairs. So it looks realistic. They don't all go in the same direction.
right. So over here, is this the 770? No. Actually, let's go back up here now. in here. I'm working from left to right and mostly from up to down um, because that keeps you from smearing it if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed you're gonna want to work the other way. This is the 704. All right. We've got lots of long, unruly hairs here on this guy. Right up in here. If we look, we see that they kind of grow out like a tree. This is like sort of his eyebrow, I guess. Okay. And then we'll go over it again with the cream. on top of there. Oops, I'm not really paying attention to the direction of the hairs there. Don't do that! Don't do what I just did! <laughs> again on one of the brightest areas here on the whole drawing. I'm just sort of, sort of outlining it. I will come back to that. attention to the way the hairs grow. Alright, we're gonna come back over in here. Do a couple more lights on top. We're getting there now. Up in here we've got some lights, it's a 
some pretty light ones and also pretty long up in here. tackle this area I guess. We'll come back to these other spots. Remember to pay direction or pay attention to the direction the hair grows because this thing is all over the place right here. And sharpen your pencils as needed. Mine's probably a little bit too dull. I should start sharpening in a minute. I don't even know if I use the 760 and it's just confusing me. I guess I'll put it in the list because I don't know, maybe I did use it. It's in a confusing one. 750. We're filling in this spot here with um, 635 with little scrubby strokes because the hair here is really short. So I'll just fill this in here. Like this. And then there's a couple little spots here where it's a little darker that I missed. There's one there. Okay. You know, I think I might just do this whole area here with this. There's currently a boy holding a ferret right over my shoulder. So we're doing a whole base here of 635. And we'll come back and put in the details over top. All right, so now let's do a little, oh, 706. We'll do some 706 all through here. Again, where you can follow the direction of the hair, we're getting into a bunch of really scrubby little hairs here now. So it might be harder to do that. Just take your time and do lots of layers. That's the most important thing. These hairs are almost more like uh, dots down here. Rather than little hairs. Okay, now we're going to go through with the 701 and we're going to sharpen it real sharp, real sharp. I 
I have a new pencil sharpener that we'll have to review shortly because the one that came with my Stabilos is starting to get pretty. Okay, so these are very, very short little strokes of hair here. Very short. Do your best to follow the direction of the grain. Don't make them go all in the same direction or it'll look weird. We're gonna have to come in over here with some of that blue and black, so let's save that spot there. We'll come back. This is gonna need more brown over here too, I think. A whole lot more brown. Let's smudge this together just a little bit here. To soften it up a little bit. And now we're going to do this dark spot here. So we're gonna take that 770 again. And it's not super dark everywhere. We're gonna probably have to come back in with a dark gray, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, we'll just have to do mostly this. Just glaze your color lightly over this spot. We're really just doing a glaze here. And I see that there's a couple dark spots up in here that I missed that we'll come back over with the black. Looks really blue there. Okay. Now let's grab the black, which is again the 750, and we'll come in and go over the darkest spots. We're gonna have to come back to and um, add some very final highlights as the last touch with some white, I think. Just sort of scrub this in here so it has a little bit of texture Really concentrate the darkest part in the part where you see the dark. Really pay attention to the reference picture. We're getting there now, everybody. Almost done. My favorite part is doing the tape peel. I'm all done. I love to peel it off and see that nice, fresh, clean edge. It's one of my favorite things. What's one of your favorite things about art? If you've made it this far, drop a comment down below. What's one of the favorite things you enjoy about art that other people maybe don't appreciate or don't get? I'd love to hear your comments. Let's see. Looks like there's a dark spot right here, and another one right here. And there. A little bit right there. And then, if you look, there's actually a little dark coming down in some of these spots right here. You should probably have your pencil sharper than mine is. Mine is not sharp enough right now. Hey everybody, we're coming into the home stretch here now. All right, now let's add in some little tiny dots of dark where we see it. Don't do too much or it'll get too dark and be overwhelming. Just add in a little bit of darkness. We'll smudge this out a little bit too, just lightly. Little dots. These are really just little dots. Sort of try to follow the direction of the hair growth that you can see again as we've been doing all along here. Okay, now we're gonna sharpen up our yellow one which was uh, 105. 
Okay, we're going to use the yellow and come in here and put in some highlights now. This is 105. I think I missed some footage here. I had to stop. Um, my husband was shoveling the roof of my little studio here. In fact, he's still doing it, so if you hear a bunch of clunks, it's him. I was going to try to wait him out, but I think he's going to be out there too long shoveling, so... Just ignore it. <laughs> uh, the joys of trying to film when you have your family's home, right? Uh, can you hear the clunking? That's him. I mean, we do have a lot of snow on the roof, so it's got to come off. Maybe I can put some nice music in the background here instead for a little bit. Okay, I think we're almost done here. Let's smudge this out a little bit so it looks a little... Okay. All right, everybody. I think it's time for our whiskers and our white highlights. All right. So again, we're gonna take the, if you have it, the Faber-Castell 101. Um, I feel like it's good for the details. If not, just go ahead and use the Stabilo one or whatever you have. So there's one. You want to try to do these in long, smooth strokes if possible. Try to lift away as you go at the end. And if you make one that you really don't like, you can sort of try to tap it out a little bit. Like that. I didn't like that one, and I don't like this one too much either, so let's try to tap it out without blurring too many of the details. And then you can push it back too a little bit. Try to keep your pencil really sharp here. I have to come back in here and redo some of those or I scrubbed out some of the stuff I didn't like. been a lot smoother if I wasn't trying to fill my phone now. We've got some whites here, some really bright highlights here, and there's a couple up in here. I think 
I think this is done. Tap those back a little bit and let's just touch up this highlight here, right there. Right there. And maybe glaze just a little bit of white over here. Right here. There's a little bit of white here, a little bit brighter right there. Okay, this is done. All right, now it's time for my favorite part, the tape peel. Okay, tape peel time. Ooh, that's my favorite. So there you have it. It's all done. There's our very first tutorial. I hope you enjoyed making this with me. If you do, please like and subscribe and I'm planning to have a new tutorial, I think most Sundays. I think my schedule right now is going to be like a little vloggy type thing on Friday, a tutorial on Sunday, and then if I have time, a relaxing time lapse on Saturday. So I will let you know if that changes, but that's the schedule as of now. Thanks for being here with me today, and I hope you had fun. Until next time, happy creating!